Hi there and welcome to another video on network X and graphs. In this video we're going to look at the algebraic connectivity of a graph and we're also going to consider connected components, graph density and bridges. So let's get started. We're going to look at the algebraic connectivity which is also called the Fiedler value of a graph and it's equal to the second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix of the graph. And this algebraic connectivity value is greater than zero only if the graph is a connected graph. If it's not connected, in other words, if there's more than one connected component, then the algebraic connectivity will be zero. This is also related to the fact that the number of times zero appears as an eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix, that's equal to the number of connected components in the graph. So for example, if there were three zeros, the graph would have three connected components. So we've got a notebook here and I'm importing NumPy and Network X and we're creating an Erdos Renyi graph. This is a random graph with 15 nodes where each where any two pairs of nodes have a probability of 0.25 of having an edge between them. And we're seeding it with the value 50. And we can draw the graph here. And you see that we've got this graph here where some nodes only have one connection, others have many. And we can measure how dense this graph is with the Network X density function and we should see a value roughly related to 0.25 because we specified that two, a pair of nodes has a probability of 0.25 of having an edge, so the density is roughly 0.25. The density is a measure of the proportion of how many edges there are in a graph over how many possible edges you could have in a complete graph. So a complete graph would have density of one, and a graph that has no edges would have density of zero. In this case, we have a graph that is 0 0.25 density. So we can also use this function here to view the number of connected components. And we should see that there's only one connected component because every node can be connected to every other node in this graph, or rather you can traverse a path from one node to any other node. There are no islands or con disconnected components. So now we're going to analyze the eigenvalues and I'm going to copy this code in. We've, we've used this code before. We take the Laplacian matrix of G and we then find the eigenvalues. And you can see that the second smallest eigenvalue is greater than zero, which means we have a connected graph. There's only one zero eigenvalue. And that fact we stated earlier says that that means there's only one connected component in the graph. So it's fully connected. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to print out the edges in the graph. So we can iterate over the edges. There is a graph.edges property and we can print the edge that we have here. This gives us back a tuple with two nodes uh, in each edge. So node zero is connected to node four, node seven, 10 and 11 here. And we can see that for all of the nodes here. So what we want to do is we want to write a bit of code now to disconnect the graph. We want nodes one to seven to be disconnected from nodes eight to 14. So what we can do is we can say for node one and node two in graph.edges, and if node one is less than eight, and that's less than or equal to node two, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the node, these nodes because node one was less than eight and node two is eight or more. And that's what we're saying here. We want to disconnect nodes one to seven from nodes eight to 14. So we can call graph.remove edge and pass node one and node two in there. And that should do the trick here. So we should now have two distinct components within the graph. So if I call the number connected components, number connected components, pass in the graph to that. Now we have two connected components. And that's quite interesting. If we draw the graph out using the draw method, we now see that there are actually two distinct components in the graph. So with a disconnected graph, we should now see that the algebraic connectivity is zero. So if I copy that eigenvalue code here, we now have a second smallest eigenvalue, which is also zero. You can see the exponent here to the minus 16. That's basically zero. So again, if we call nx.algebraic connectivity, this is also a function in network x to handily uh, calculate that algebraic connectivity, sorry about that. And we see that that is zero. Um, and we also can see that the density of the graph is going down as well because we've removed 
some edges from the graph. So now there are less edges than there were before. So the overall density is down to 0.14. Um, and you can verify that by checking the eigenvalues. So um, I'm just going to draw the graph out again here and then we'll introduce a single connection between these two components. So I'm just going to pick a random node between 1 and 7, well, let's say 5, and we're going to connect node 5 to node, let's say node 10. So that will connect one node from this part of the graph to another node from this part of the graph. So to create that node, we're going to add the edge to the graph using the graph.addEdge function. And we'll say from node 5 to node 10. And then we can draw the graph again. And the graph is displayed down here. And you can see now we have, once again, we only have one connected component. So what we now want to do is look at the bridges in the graph. A graph bridge is a pair of nodes where if you remove the edge between the nodes, you would increase the number of connected components by one. So if we look, we can get um, a copy of the graph, and I'm going to just say graph.copy. This is a function in Network X. A graph has a function called copy, which you can use to create a copy of the graph. And what we're going to do is look at the graph's bridges. Now, there's a function called nx.bridges, and we can pass g to that. Let's see that now. I'm actually just going to list that out because it returns a generator. So we convert that to a list. This gives us back all the bridges in the graph. These are all pairs of nodes where if you remove the edge between them, it would increase the graph components by one. So let's pick the first one of these. And that's the, the node zero to node four connection. This is a bridge in the graph. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy gr the graph and we're going to disconnect from graph 2 by removing the edge of this bridge here. I'll save that into a variable called bridge. So this is 0 and 4 and then we can remove that here by passing that in and we unpack it into two arguments here with the star. So we've now removed the edge between node 0 and node 4. What we need to do now is just draw the graph and you should see that we now have two components here. I need to draw the copied graph here. Sorry about that. And we now have two connected components. So the purpose of that was to show you that the nx.bridges function returns all of the bridges in the graph. So you can easily get those pairs of nodes that where you remove the edge between them, you increase the number of connected components in the graph. Final part of this tutorial, I want to introduce a highly connected random graph. So I'm going to copy the Erdos Renu graph code. The only difference is that the probability of two nodes having a connection is now 90%, 0.9. So we'll create a new graph G and we can draw that out below. And you should see that this is a much more dense graph here. We have many more connections between different nodes. And you should see as well that because there are many more connected pairs of nodes, the density of this graph is much higher. And in this case, it's 0.876. That's the, the density of the graph. So 87.6% of the possible node-to-node -node connections that could exist do exist. Um, so that wraps up for this video. What we've seen in this video is that the algebraic connectivity, which you can get by analyzing the eigenvalues or using the nx.algebraic connectivity function, this tells you the value of the second smallest eigenvalue, and it tells you whether or not the graph is fully connected. The number of zeros that appear as eigenvalues in the, of the Laplacian matrix tell you how many components you've got in the graph. And you can also find bridges in the graph using the nx.bridges function. And if you disconnect the nodes involved in a bridge, you will increase the number of zero eigenvalues in the graph, and you'll increase the number of connected components in the graph as well. So these are key facts in graph analysis. And it's important to know how to find bridges, how to remove bridges. One of the things about graphs in general is that bridges are very important because they can tell you um, what are two nodes that are very important in connecting distinct parts of the graph. And you know that because if you remove the edge between them, you would actually disconnect parts of the graph. So a bridge is an important part of a graph and it's easy to find in Network X with the nx.bridges function. So that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and we'll do more videos on NetworkX in the future. There will be a blog post for this 
which will be linked in the description and the code on Jupyter Notebook on GitHub as well. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.